this is the heart. We've cut it in half. So when we open it up, we have the right side and the left side. You can tell that this is the right side of the heart because the wall is thinner here. It's thicker over here. The left side of the heart is gonna have a thicker wall because it has to be stronger to pump the blood to the rest of the body, where the right side of the heart is only gonna to have to pump the blood to the lungs. This chamber here is at the bottom and it's on the left side. So this is the left ventricle. This chamber here is on the right side and it's at the bottom, so it is the right ventricle. If you separate it just a little bit on the right side, you can see that the chordae tendinae from the valves are above the ventricle. So this area up here where the top of the probe is, is the right atrium. The valve located between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. And that's what you see here. You can see that the valve is real floppy and you're going to have several string structures attached to it and those are called chordae tendinae. See this lump here on the side of the wall? See how it comes in here and it comes, comes over that right there? That right there is a lump and that's a papillary muscle. So it's going to ensure that the chordae tendinae hold on to the valves so when the blood is going back up to the atrium, the valve is going to close like this right here. Okay, the pulmonary, from, from the right ventricle, blood is gonna to go to the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery. It's gonna be located way on back in here, but it's gonna have the same structure as this aortic semilunar valve. So we'll talk about that structure in just a second. Let's go to the left side of the heart. You can see this huge lump here. This is another papillary muscle. These are the chordae tendinae. This is the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve, and it's separating from the left atrium. The left atrium is... Okay. okay, when we come to the left side of the heart, this is the left atrium, this is the left ventricle. You know that this is the ventral be ventricle because it's inferior to the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. Whenever the ventricle contracts, the blood's going to go back up to the atrium and see that the valve is going to close here. It comes up like this right here and it closes. So the chordae tendinae are going to prevent the flow of the blood or prevent the valve from opening into the atrium. That's how it prevents backflow. Whenever the ventricle does contract and that valve closes, the blood's going to go this direction. So this direction right here goes up into the aorta. So this is the aorta here. So the valve located at the base of the aorta is the aortic semilunar valve. When blood goes this direction, see how smooth it flows? There's nothing impeding the flow of the blood. But then whenever it back, whenever the ventricle relaxes and the blood comes back, it's going to open that valve like that and it like, turns into like a pocket, fills up with blood, and it closes that opening to the aorta so that blood does not flow back down into the ventricle. Okay, the structures you need to know for this is um, you need to know the right side of the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, left side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle. You need to know that this is the tricuspid valve, this is the bicuspid valve, this is the aortic semilunar valve, and you cannot see it, but there is a pulmonary semilunar valve deep within here. This is your interventricular septum. All of this brown part here is made up of cardiac muscle cells, so that is your myocardium. The outer layer here that's going to be touching the fat, it's, it's a very thin layer, you cannot remove it from the heart. That is the epicardium or visceral pericardium. Um, you have to know the names chordae tendinae and papillary muscle. You have to know that this tip end down here is the apex of the heart. And the ridges in the ventricles I don't think you have to know this, but I'll tell you anyway. The ridges in the ventricles here, see the ventricles are, have these ridges, and they're called trabeculae carnae. Okay, in order to find out the names of the blood vessels that are going to be bringing blood towards the heart or taking blood away from the heart, you need to follow them with a probe. The easiest way to do this is, this one is easy here because you look at your left ventricle and you go up through your aortic semilunar valve, and so that's the aorta. On your test, it'll go through the hole. Let me do it just a second, get it through. 
So this is the way the picture will look on your test. It'll say, the question will be, name the blood vessel this probe passes through. And you should be able to look at this heart and say, this is the left side because it is thicker. It's going from the left ventricle, so the blood is going to go from the left ventricle out to the aorta. You have to know the, way, the pathway of blood flow through the heart in order to get questions like that. Another example would be if the probe went through this direction here. The question would be, name the blood vessel the probe passes through. You would look at this and say, this is the left side of the heart because it's thicker. This is the left atrium. And blood is brought into the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. Let's see if we can find the vena cava. Okay, the probe's passing through here. So on your test, it would be like this. Um, and you would notice that the probe is located in the right atrium. And so the blood vessel the probe is passing through would be the vena cava. You know that it's going to be in the right atrium because the end of the probe is before it gets to the actual valve there. Okay, so let's find the pulmonary trunk. It's out this direction here. Okay, so here's the question. It would be name the blood vessel the probe is passing through. You would be able to look at this and say, this is the right side of the heart. The probe is leaving the ventricle. So that's going to be the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery. Those are the four blood vessels you need to know that are bringing blood towards the heart or taking blood away from the heart. And that's all you have to know for the heart. Name this structure that separates the two chambers. You are correct if you said interventricular septum. Name this chamber. This wall is thicker, so it must be the left ventricle. Name this structure, the tip of the heart. That is the apex of the heart. Name this bulging area. It is a papillary muscle. Name the strings that are attached to the papillary muscle. They are chordae tendinae. Name this valve attached to the chordae tendinae. Right here. It is the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. Notice that it's really close to this valve up here, but chordae tendinae are not attached to these flaps of the valve. So what is the name of this valve? You can see that blood is gonna go from the left ventricle out. You know it goes through the aorta, so this is the aortic semilunar valve. What chamber is this? It's the right ventricle. And name the blood vessel that the probe is passing through. It would be the pulmonary trunk. Name this valve. It would be the tricuspid valve.